Welcome everyone to Maximize Your Technology Donations through TechSoup. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I am your host and presenter for today's webinar, so I'm happy to be here with you. You should be able to hear the audio play through your computer speakers right now. Uh, and if you are hearing an echo, you may be logged in more than once, and we'll need to close additional instances of ReadyTalk. This is the platform that we are using today, and you can feel free to chat in at any time to let us know if you have any questions. No need to raise your hand. You can just chat to us. If you need help or have questions for me or Susan on the back end, feel free to let us know in that window. We will keep all lines muted so we can get a nice recording for you to refer to later. If you lose your Internet connection, you can reconnect clicking the Join Meeting button in the, uh, in the um, confirmation or reminder emails that you would have received before. Um, if you lose your phone connection, for those of you who are dialing in by phone, you can reconnect and dial back in at any time. If that streaming audio doesn't work, Susan has chatted out the dial-in number for your use. We are recording today's session as I mentioned, and it will be made available on our website at TechSoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. You'll also be able to find it on our YouTube channel at TechSoup Video. And within a few days you'll get an email with this presentation and any links that we discuss. If you want to tweet us, you can do so at TechSoup or with the hashtag TSWebinars. And just to look really quickly for those of you who got a reminder email an hour ago, you can click this link on the side of the email confirmation reminder email and download today's presentation. I will be doing a lot of sharing of my desktop, so you'll be seeing my live screen. So it won't exactly reflect what's captured in the slides, but that is available as a resource for you. And when you get that follow-up email, you'll look in the same place for the, for the slides later. And this is that green Join Meeting button in case you get kicked out. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup. And I'm happy to be joining you today. Uh, I come to TechSoup, uh, I've been here now almost 9 years. And before I came to TechSoup, I had worked for three small nonprofits in Washington, D.C. and Oakland, California, where I used TechSoup uh, as a resource and a provider of the technology for those small nonprofits I worked for. So I come to this from having the experience of sitting where you are sitting right now being the person who uh, looked for the technology even though I – well, you may be an IT person, but I certainly was not uh, an IT or technically trained person, and trying to make those technology decisions for the organizations I worked with, trying to find what the best resources were, which tool was right for our needs, uh, evaluating and comparing costs, and looking at licenses, and trying to learn about the technology that's out there. And TechSoup was one of those resources to me. So I am happy to be here to talk to you about how you can maximize the donations you receive through TechSoup's programs. You'll also see on the back end, uh, assisting with chat, Susan Hope Bard, our Training and Education Manager here at TechSoup. And she'll be here to help raise questions up and help you with any technical issues throughout the webinar. And you'll hear her voice on the line too as she helps um, escalate your questions to me as I do this tour. Looking at our objectives for today, we hope that you will come away having gained a better understanding of TechSoup's donation programs and knowing what you can access and how to access them. We hope that you'll be able to name at least three newer technology donation programs that are available to your organization that maybe you didn't know about before. And we want you to expand your comfort with accessing those donations through TechSoup. And we will spend a lot of time answering your questions today. I, I will try to do this in a half an hour and then leave the rest of the time for your questions. And if there are not questions, then we can just end early and get back to regular life. So before we start with um, my actual tour, I really want to hear from you, our audience, about what you most would like to talk about today. What is the technology that you are most needing in your organization right now? You can click on any of these radio buttons on the screen, and you can select you can actually select any. I said select up to three just to help me narrow down the categories. But if you can select what you are most needing. Are you really needing hardware like computers, laptops, desktops? Um, are you needing routers and wireless hotspots and things like that? That would be under the computers or hardware. Are you looking to learn more about the cloud applications like Office 365 or Google Apps? Are you needing uh, more on telecom systems, phone systems, online conferencing tools, webinar tools? 
Are you needing security software like your Norton Antivirus? Or maybe you are needing security hardware like Cisco firewalls or things like that. Are you looking for Office productivity suites like Microsoft Office? Uh, do you need web and graphic design software like Adobe or Dreamweaver, uh, Adobe Creative Cloud stuff? Um, are you needing a database or a CRM? To manage your a CRM is a constituent relationship management tool or customer relationship management tool to manage the people you serve and work with. Are you looking for fundraising tools, accounting tools, or server and network management? And I recognize this doesn't capture every kind of product or tool that could be out there. So if there's something that's not included on this list, feel free to chat in what you're most needing at your organization. I'm going to wait for just another second and then share the results, and then I will try to capture the ones that are most popular on this list so that I can spend time covering those areas in particular. So I see cloud apps and hardware are both computer hardware, very popular on this list. And fundraising, color me shocked that nonprofits need help with fundraising tools. And office productivity. Okay. So again, feel free to chat in. Uh, somebody's chatting in grant possibility suggestions, so grant tools. I can certainly mention those along the way. So thank you for taking part in that survey. Uh, we will hopefully have a chance to show you a lot of these different categories as we move through TechSoup's donation programs. But I wanted to get your input before we take it away with the actual live tour. And I'm assuming some of you may be pretty new to TechSoup, or maybe you've requested donations, or maybe you've received donations through uh, TechSoup before, but maybe you weren't the person administering those donations. Um, and so I want to just do a quick introduction of who we are, and that we are also a 501c3 nonprofit, and we are now everywhere in the world that's blue on this map, which is almost everywhere. I'd love it if you'd chat in to let us know where you're joining from today. We've been around since 1987, and we are headquartered here in San Francisco where Susan and I are presenting today. And um, we really work hard to be what we call a dynamic bridge between civil society organizations and social change agents. So that includes nonprofits, public libraries, foundations, community foundations, family foundations, all of the above, and, um, and religious organizations. So we're really glad to have you all joining us. If you're joining from outside the United States, today's presentation will primarily look at the TechSoup.org U.S. donation programs. So if you are from elsewhere, we recommend checking out TechSoup.global and selecting your country from the list, and you'll be taken to the website of our programs in your country or your region of the world. The folks who can access donations uh, to technology or technology donations through TechSoup are nonprofits and public libraries with a 501c3 status. Like I said, that includes uh, many churches, uh, synagogues, so religious organizations or faith based organizations, public libraries that are in the IMLS database. If you are friends of the library or library foundation group with a 501c3 status, or a community or family foundation with a 501c3 status, then you may also be eligible for our programs. If you are joining us from a school like K-12 through or a university, you may find that there are some programs that are open to you and others that have a different avenue to access donated technology. For example, Microsoft has its own education program that they donate through, not through TechSoup. So keep that in mind depending on what type of organization you are will determine your donation types. I also want to mention that if you are an affiliated group of organizations, meaning you are a branch of libraries, and you are joining from, from a branch of libraries, or uh, an organization like um, United Way, or Boys and Girls Clubs, or YMCAs, any number of organizations where you may have chapters around the country, or affiliates, or branches, you also can reach out to us directly. You can feel free to email me after this webinar, and we can connect you with folks who can help register all of your branches or chapters at the same time. And you can then each 
access donations individually for your own branch's needs, but you can get registered really quickly all by yourself. And we'll share out the link to that, uh, or the, the link to the email address that you can reach out to directly um, in the chat window. So before I go ahead with the screen sharing, I just want to mention, even though this is not fiscal year yet, our fiscal year is coming up in just a couple of months. And so we are at the end of March, and at the end of June is when our fiscal year resets here at TechSoup. And many of you may have your fiscal year reset as well. And I mention this because there are many programs in our donation program partners uh, that reset with the fiscal year. And what that means is that for programs that may limit you to you know, one donation per fiscal year, or two, or five, or however many, that this resets as of June 30th. So I recommend checking out this link and looking at the programs that you may be interested in and making a request before June 30th because as of July 1st, you're in a new fiscal year. And you could request again if you need additional licenses. Like for example, if you need another license of QuickBooks for your accounting or your, your bookkeeping, you can request a copy of it now, and then you can request again after July 1st, or as of July 1st. Um, and so one way to really maximize the technology donations is to look at those calendars and see what is it that you really need. And if you are limited to one per year, that you are making sure that you are using that up as you need it and you know, as it actually helps you to do, uh, that you are taking advantage of that. Because it kind of allows you to double dip within a short time frame if you need multiple licenses and that fiscal year uh, resetting helps you access multiple within a short amount of time. So just in the next couple of months, you'll have an opportunity to do that before our fiscal year ends. Some of our more popular programs like Microsoft for example, don't work with the fiscal year. So with that in mind, they have their own two-year calendar. So you can request up to those maximum limits every two years with Microsoft. So keep in mind not all of our programs are affected. So you can see this list over here of programs not affected by the fiscal year. So some of our programs are not. Other ones are. And that's where I point out that you know, maximizing that and being aware of those kind of calendar reset timeframes can really help ensure that you are getting what you need when you need it. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my desktop and you'll be able to see the TechSoup homepage. And right now I'm just showing a slide of the Microsoft donations. Since many of you mentioned the cloud apps, I'll go ahead and share my desktop. It will take just a second for it to show up. And hopefully you'll be seeing the TechSoup.org homepage. And let me know if you're not. It might take a moment to load up. So chat in if it hasn't loaded for you. I'm getting nods that it looks like it's loaded. So here on the TechSoup homepage, I am currently not logged in, but you can see that I can log in if I'm already a member up here, or I can join TechSoup. And to join, it's totally free. You can join at any time. Um, what you need to have to join is your organization's name, address, an email address for the organization. Uh, and you will be asked for a personal email address for yourself. So you'll join as an individual. So Jane at Youth of Tomorrow can join. But you'll also be asked for an organization email address like info at Youth of Tomorrow. And it needs to be an address that people actually check because that's where your fulfillment emails will go. So when you request a donation, you'll get your email to that info at Youth of Tomorrow address to tell you here's how you can access your donation, or here's where you go to now download your software, or here is your access key to go and uh, log in and get your GoTo webinar or whatever the program may be that you're requesting. So keep that in mind. You'll also need your organization's EIN, which is your employer ID number. And for those of you that are in the middle of tax season, you know that you can find your EIN on your W-2s if you have them. If you don't have that, there should be somebody within your organization that can give you that information and help you uh, get that EIN. You'll also need to know your organization's budget. Uh, and it doesn't have to be the exact number, a nice round number like our annual budget is approximately uh, $82,000 per year, or our annual budget is 
$550,000 per year. That will help you uh, determine which programs your organization is, are most likely eligible to receive. And you can check here. Uh, if you are already registered and you sign in, this will show you which programs you are actually eligible to request donations in. If you are not yet registered, you can do this check your eligibility here under the product catalog on the left navigation. If you check your eligibility and you can type in, you know, so you can say, I am representing a 501c3 nonprofit. You can say we are located in Georgia. You can select – whoops, I moved it to Guam somehow. Say I'm located in Georgia, and I'll select my organization type. And let's say that we do health services and related activities. Now we didn't come up with this list of organization types. These are listings of the types of organizations called NTEE codes that the IRS uses to designate your tax status. So we use these designations uh, that the IRS has determined. So we'll say we're a health services and related activities organization. And then you can select your organization's subtype. And this will be more likely the actual work that you do. So you can say, well, we are a uh, – we are a – reproductive health care organization, or a rescue and an emergency service. You can pick whichever one most fits your organization's type. You might find that there are a couple of different areas that your organization could fit into, that you do just as much work on the rescue and emergency service as you do in hospice. And so I would recommend doing this eligibility check twice and see which one yields the best results for your organization providing that you legitimately do that work, right? Because we are in good faith trusting that you're registering your organization appropriately. So I'm going to say that our annual budget is $82,000. No commas or anything go in there. And then I can check eligibility. And it will take me to this page that now shows me all of the donation programs for which my organization is likely to be eligible. And it's tons of stuff, programs I may never have heard of before, but there's so much available. And people don't remember that even once you're registered with TechSoup, you can sign in. If I log in, I can do this eligibility check again, and it will show me all of the programs for which my organization is eligible. Um, Oh, so it's, it's telling me I'm likely to request products uh, from the programs below, but it doesn't have me actually logged in um, because I have too many accounts in here. So I, I apologize. But it would show me the full list of different organization types – or different donation programs, sorry, for which my organization type and subtype and budget are eligible. And these eligibility requirements are based on our donor partners uh, setting – their requirements, just like any in-kind donation or grant. So Adobe, for example, can say, we want to donate our products or discount our products only for women's shelters and animal shelters and veterans services, and nobody else. They can say that. They don't, which is great. They are pretty wide open to everybody now. So if you had come to our site a few years ago and requested Adobe, maybe you weren't eligible. Well, the programs change, and we are always working to expand to different donations available, and expand who they are available to. So we are working to try and ensure that social change makers, no matter where you are or what you are doing in the world, that we are trying to help support you with expanding those donation programs. So you can see all of these different programs available. I am going to go ahead and go back up to this product catalog link where you can browse our site. And so this is one way to maximize your donations, doing this eligibility check, and then clicking on these links to see what programs that maybe you weren't even aware of that you are eligible for, and selecting those. Another way that you can really maximize the donations that you are receiving through TechSoup is to browse different categories. So you, know, you can browse our site by donor or company, and we have the biggest donors bolded here. So that our biggest programs like Adobe, uh, Intuit which makes QuickBooks accounting products, Microsoft, Symantec, Cisco. These are our biggest programs, meaning they donate the most. And they are the ones that most of our users come looking for because that's what they have heard. Oh, we can get that really inexpensively through TechSoup, or we can get a donation of that through TechSoup. 
but this has all of these other donor partners as well. So you can browse by donor or company. So if you say, oh yeah, I want to know what kind of Dell hardware is available, you can select that link to Dell, and it will take you to that program page and explain how it works. Um, but one other way to do it is by category. So I asked you in that poll question at the front end, what category or, or what type of technology are you most needing at your organization? If you are most needing computers and electronics, hardware like laptops, desktops, tablets, uh, mobile hotspots, this is what you would click on. Easy, right? And then it will take you to, and I will just go ahead and open it up. It will take you to this hardware section, Computers and Electronics, where there is a drop-down where you can select. Right now it is defaulted to mobile devices. And so you can see, oh look, wireless hotspots. I can get wireless hotspots. I can get five of them for a $60 admin fee. That Then I can travel around and our CEO or ED can go on that trip and they can have Internet wherever they are. Great! Or maybe I am with a library and I want to have 10 mobile hotspots because we are going to do a lending program and we are going to lend mobile hotspots out to people in our community who don't have access to Internet otherwise. Great! So these types of things are here. You can also see that there are um, mobile phones. There are tablets. So lots of different devices available. So you can look at mobile devices. You can look at our refurbished computing initiative, which refurbished desktops and laptops. You can look at network hardware. So if you need uh, switches and routers and firewalls, if you need other types of office equipment, like sometimes we have postal meters. Other times we have label printers. Um, all kinds of things. So this is how you can browse our site to find the different types of things you might be looking for. So browse by category. Folks also mentioned cloud computing, cloud apps like Office 365, Google Apps. Um, you may not know, but we are the uh, validator for Office 365 for Microsoft. We are also the validator for Google for Nonprofits for Google. Uh, worldwide. Uh, and so we are helping to ensure that you can access the different cloud products out there. We also have a lot of other donors like ReadyTalk for example, the program that we are using right now. That's a cloud service delivering web conferencing online. Same with GoToMeeting and GoToTraining. So you can access these kinds of donations. Um, so that's just to show you the way that you can look around our site and so you can select software as a service or infrastructure as a service. And infrastructure as a service is like Amazon Web Services. If you want to build websites, well, website infrastructure to then build websites upon, <laughs> you can access that through TechSoup or some of that. You can get credits for it. So there are a lot of different programs available. But if you know, for example, I really just want Office 365 for example with the um, cloud computing one. You can just click on Microsoft, or you can do a search on our site, either one. And you can see some of the top Microsoft products linked easily here to access on the side. So if you know you are going to need Office Productivity, which was also one of the top categories you guys voted for in that poll at the beginning, you can get right to Microsoft Office here. Or you can get to your Windows operating systems, or Windows Server, or SQL Server. So you can click to these really quickly. You can also browse all of the Microsoft products, and they are by far the most uh, generous of all of our donors. They donate uh, billions of dollars in products to the nonprofit and social good sectors around the world. Um, and so I think we have four or 500 products in here that are just Microsoft products. So if you need individual licenses of Microsoft Project, Somebody mentioned Project in the chat earlier, uh, Project Management Tools. You can get Microsoft Project as an individual standalone product if you want a donation of that. You can get Microsoft Visio. Um, I don't know. There's so many products I can't even go down the whole list. Like I said, there's four or 500 that are just Microsoft products. But you can select to browse products, and you can look at those individual products. You can look at desktop applications. You can look at Office Suites. Um, all these different categories, server products, Mac products that they offer. If you need full operating systems instead of just an upgrade, like for example if you don't have a legitimate license of 
a Windows operating system currently on a machine and you need it to be legitimate, uh, maybe it was something that was donated to you and you just have no idea who owns that license, or maybe you, have, you bought a computer at Best Buy and um, it just has the Home Edition, and you really want to have a pro operating system on it instead of the consumer level operating system. Well, you can request Get Genuine to get Windows full operating systems. However, keep in mind that Microsoft allows you to do this one time ever in the life of the organization. So just keep that in mind as you are looking through the different donations. So I can request Office Standard if I want something like that, or Office Professional Plus. If I click to view the details, it takes me to this product page where it tells me, okay, this is Microsoft. This is in the Windows platform, not a Mac platform. This is going to be downloaded. So you would download this from their Volume Licensing Center. It tells me that it's available, and it tells me it's a $40 fee for the professional version of Microsoft Office. And then I can scroll down and read, all right, what are the applications in this suite? Okay, so this one has access, so I need that database to manage my vendors or donors. It has Excel. It has InfoPath. It has OneNote. It has Outlook. So it has all of these different programs available. It tells me about the capabilities. Some of this is not uh, beachside fun reading, but it is helpful if you are not sure what is in a product, or you are not sure if it is going to work with what you need. You can click on System Requirements. Many times it will list m like minimum specifications for your hardware. Sometimes we just link off to where the system requirements are uh, already listed on, it, on their own site. And then you can also check on the tab for Rules, Eligibility, and Restrictions. And you can see you can request up to 50 licenses within a two-year cycle of this or similar title products. Um, and you can request products from 10 title groups, meaning you can request up to 50 licenses from Office products. You can request up to 5 server licenses. That's a different title group. Um, so there's so much that you can actually access from these programs that most organizations never actually meet their limits. You can also see other things that are being suggested that might complement that product, or other things that we know that nonprofits look for when they come to our site and look for Office Suites. They may also be interested in Office 365. You can see that that's listed right here. You can also just search for a product by name if you know it, and it will show up in our search. But I'll go ahead and click on the Office 365. And this is available. It's a zero admin fee. Nothing is paid directly to TechSoup for this. You can click to get it now, and it actually takes you to Microsoft's website where you apply essentially for a, what they call like a free trial. And then we validate that you are a legitimate eligible nonprofit or public library or whatever it may be. And then once that is once you've got the stamp of validity on you, that becomes a permanent uh, free account depending on the version you select. So Office 365 has a number of versions that you can access. Uh, there are some totally free, entirely donated versions, and then there are some that include things like the Office applications where you pay a monthly fee per user or per seat. So if you have five employees and you want them to have access to the Office Suite, and you don't want to do the Office Suite through our regular Office Suite donations. You can do that directly through Microsoft, and you can pay a fee for that. So it depends on what you really want. And so if you click on that link, it takes you to Microsoft. But you can see some of the benefits and what's included in it. So you can get your email included. You can get your Skype for Business. You can get your uh, cloud-based Office applications. And then you can also check these tabs to see what the process is for getting it and what the rules and eligibility restrictions are for all of Microsoft donations. So I'm going to take a quick pause and see what kinds of questions we have in since I promised lots of time for Q&A. And I can continue showing things around the site as people want to see them. But Susan, what do we have so far? Thanks so much. Uh, we do have quite a few questions. And one of them is regarding the different donors that we work with. Do they each have the same requirements? 
Great question, and no, they don't. So every donor can set their own eligibility requirements. Like I mentioned earlier, it's similar to a grant process or getting an in-kind donation that every donor can have their own uh, they can say, I only want to donate to organizations that have a budget of less than $500,000 per year. Or I, I want our donations to go to organizations of a certain type or that serve a certain area. So every donor is different. And like I said, we are always working to try and expand those, uh, the eligibility so that more people can access those donations. Um, but you know, everyone's different. So you'll find that some will let anybody have stuff. Like Adobe is now available to pretty much everyone. Um, but it's a discount program rather than a donation. And, and really it's our donor partners who set those guidelines, and we negotiate with them to make them open. Excellent. Thank you. Another question is about our hardware. Some folks are looking for very specific specifications, <laughs> um, like for a 17-inch laptop or a 14-inch laptop. Um, talk a little bit more about the options that they have for hardware. Sure, yeah. I can show – if you click on this catalog, product catalog drop-down, you can actually see a link to our hardware center, and you can look at networking equipment or refurbished computers. Um, I'll just take us to our hardware center to start, and you can see some different options that are listed out here and ways to search. So one thing I'll mention today, and I have this also circled in the slides, that from now through uh, the 31st – actually I'm going to click back on that tab so you can see it – now through March 31st, our Refurbished Computer Initiative is offering a 10% rebate on anything you uh, request from that program. So if you request laptops or desktops, you can get those right now and uh, get 10% back on anything. So if you click on that RCI program link that was in that little ad, you can browse the computers here by laptop, desktop, monitors, and you can also look at warranties available. They all do come with some warranty. It varies depending on the different donor partner. But you can also get extended warranties. These are all – everything in the refurbished computer program, they are all factory refurbished by re professional refurbishers. Most of these are machines that, for example, like General Motors might have uh, 5,000 computers that they cycle through per year, and they might change out their computers every two years for their staff. And so those computers that were high-level business-grade machines that only had two years of use are being shipped off to a refurbisher. And those are the types of machines that are coming into our refurbishing program. And so we have different partners that do the refurbishment. So you can see underneath PCRR or Interconnection. There's also CDI. These are different companies that do factory refurbishment. You can browse their different options. So I'm looking at laptops right now. And you can see uh, – you can click in to look at the details on any of these. Um, and you can see what they come installed with. So they may have access to – they might have an office suite already installed. They may have your operating system already installed. So look through. There's so much here. Um, you, you know, for example, I'll just click into this HP EliteBook. I'm actually on an EliteBook right now conducting this webinar. You can see it's a Core Duo. It has Windows 10 installed. Um, you can read through everything that's available, and it also comes with Microsoft Office 2010 comes with Windows 10 Pro. So you don't need to pay for a separate Office Suite with some of these because they come with it. comes with a power adapter and a one-year warranty. You can read all of the details on this list of specifications. So you can see all of your hardware specs. You can see the display size of the screens and how much it weighs. All of those details that you'd find on any commercial site you can find. You can also see any hardware details around how it was uh, restored or refurbished, and you can look at the rules and eligibility. And pretty much anybody who is registered and eligible uh, through TechSoup's donation programs can access the refurbished computer initiative computers. And these also have free take back, free recycling at the end of their life cycle. So when you're done with this computer three or five or however many years later, we'll take it back for free to recycle it. So you don't have to pay for electronics recycling. So that's just one example. They all have different specs and different, um, 
different details. And these are changing out really often on our site. We get new stock in. Sometimes we have um, Macs most of the time. Like right now we have a MacBook laptop. Uh, so once in a while we have Macs in. The great majority though are PCs. And that's just because we have donation programs with uh, providers that have PCs. And, and Apple is not a donor partner, so they, they don't actually donate their hardware directly. Um, so that's one option when you're looking through the Hardware Center. You can also look, if we go back to that main screen, I mentioned Mobile Hotspots. So Mobile Beacon gets you that Internet wherever you go. It's just a little tiny box you can carry with you. And you can get one or five or ten. You can get a bundle of them if you have a number of people on your staff uh, that need those. You can access Cisco networking products like uh, these little access points for your wireless. So if you have a big building or uh, multiple spots in your building that maybe don't get good signals, these little access points can help ensure that you're all getting Wi-Fi no matter where you are um, within your space. And then we also have access to new hardware through a program with Dell. So you can access discounts on their desktops like their Opti Optiplex – gosh, I can't speak today – Optiplex and Latitude desktops. Those are the ones that you most commonly see. Uh, those towers in most companies around the country are using those if they have desktop computers. Um, and then also the Inspire and an XPS Pro laptops. Um, and then lots of other discounts on hardware equipment like cameras and video cameras. They've even got backpacks and laptop bags. You can get all kinds of discounts. And for us, it's just a $10 admin fee, and that gets you access to those discounts directly through our affiliate program with them. And so you can see some examples down here of popular desktops and laptops and ac accessories available um, and other hardware. So that's one option for hardware. There is also a program that we have with uh, an organization called JourneyEd. And that's a similar thing to the Dell program where you pay a $10 fee, and you can access discounts through JourneyEd that are exclusive to TechSoup members that can get you access to additional software and hardware. Um, so there's computers and tablets. They often have you know, iPad 2s, things like that. So depending on what's available at the time. So right now they've got you know, an iPad 2 refurbished, 16 gigabyte one Wi-Fi, um, and they have some MacBooks, or they have a Surface Pro. So they have other hardware options that we don't have within TechSoup's regular catalog. They also have hardware and electronics like AV equipment, like monitors and microphones and uh, MP3 players and phone accessories, headsets, headphones. They've got a lot of different things that we don't have in our catalog. And for a $10 admin fee, you can get access to that through TechSoup. So for example, if you go to browse again our catalog by donor or company, and you go to journeyed.com here on the list, You'll see an example – or not an example, but you'll see that it's a $10 admin fee, and it gets you access to the things that I was just showing you on that site. Now you can go to that site directly, but you can't actually access the donations. Typically these donations were only available through to uh, K-12 to educators and college university educators. So in order to get the link in through TechSoup to access these discounts, um, you have to actually do it through that $10 little window. Um, but you can go and see what kinds of things they have on their site. They have other types of uh, you know, they have video editing programs like we use Camtasia here at TechSoup to edit a lot of our videos, uh, things that we don't have on our site directly. A lot of things you can get through their programs. They also have like classroom kits, like science kits and things like that. So if you do an after school program or run a daycare, um, in your church basement. Those are the kinds of things you can access through JourneyEd that maybe you didn't have access to before that you can get through our program with, uh, with them. So what other questions do we have coming in? Sure. Lots of folks have questions about how do they know the right thing to choose, and is there any support from TechSoup that can help guide them in their decisions? Sure. Yeah, there's no shortage of uh, resources that we have across our site. So I'm going to show under 
community, and resources here at the top of the screen. I'll just start under resources since that's where my cursor lies right now. But we have articles and how-tos where we often compare different products that are available. Or, okay, so do you need um, Acrobat Pro or do you need Acrobat DC? And so we may have an article that covers that. Uh, for example, you know, if you're not sure if you need to upgrade to the latest Office 2016, what's new and different? This goes detail, you know, in, in depth to compare. Okay, if you're on Office 2010 or Office 2013, what is new between that and the 2016 version? Do you need to upgrade? Can you wait? Um, is there some amazing thing that you really will benefit from? That's what a lot of our articles try to do. We try to go in depth to compare the different options available to you to help you make the best decision. Um, yeah, we also have step-by-step -step kind of how-tos, like getting started with Adobe Illustrator, which is actually uh, a series of videos that Susan here helped create with somebody else on our team walking through how to get started with some of these tools so you can see what they actually look like before you invest in it. So if you're not sure, sheesh, am I going to be able to learn this new tool? I don't know. You can check out how to get started with some of these uh, most popular tools and see, does this make sense for me? Is this something that I think I can use? Oh, that doesn't look so hard. I've got a tip to help me get going on this. Um, and so we've got lots of articles and how-tos, and you can browse by category for those. So if you're looking specifically for fundraising tools and you're not sure what's the best option for you, you can click on Fundraising and just read content that's about fundraising. Also under Resources is our blog. And we do a lot of the same along our blog content. So you can read blog posts. And a lot of these are written by people outside of TechSoup that are just going to share their expertise. So they may be from our donor partners. They may be um, just experts out in the sector. Uh, so for example, if you want to make sure that your nonprofit communications are safe, maybe there's a VPN tool that you can use so that nobody is able to look in and see what you're communicating when you're connecting to your network. So there's a lot of content here that can help you evaluate different tools that are out there and show you what's, what's maybe the best option or maybe what isn't the best option. We consider that a success too. If you come to one of our events or read some of our content and you learn, actually this is not the product that I need, then that's successful because we don't want you wasting your resources, your time, your money, your learning on something that really is not going to meet your needs. Another area here that I clicked into when I clicked into the blog is this tab on our forums. So we have forums where you can ask questions in different sections. So for example, if you're looking for design and web building, uh, different design tools or web building tools or databases and software tools, you can click into any of these tabs and it will take you to our forums where you can see existing threads about, okay, so look at QuickBooks Online Plus versus QuickBooks Online Nonprofit. And somebody had asked the question, which one is the best one for me? And they've gotten some answers. And you can read these existing conversations, or you can log in and post your own questions. Before I worked for TechSoup, I can go back and see all of my little forum posts where I was asking questions. Hey, I'm looking at Salesforce, and I'm also looking at Civi CRM, and I'm looking at Sugar CRM. Which one's the best? What's your experience? And I can get that input from real people who are using it day in and day out. So those are some of the resources available. And you can get to our forums directly from community and go to forums too. I went, I went the other way around from resources to blog. Um, you can also attend webinars like the one we're on today. We have webinars uh, usually a couple times a week on a variety of different topics. And um, you know, it may be on a topic where we are looking at different versions of something or we're showing you what it looks like in real life, or we're answering questions like today. And then the last place I would recommend looking for support is under our Help tab. And this is where you can learn about the different product uh, donation programs and how they work, what the limits are. Um, you can also contact us and reach out to our client services folks. We have people in our customer service department that are answering calls that can help you talk through some of the different changes um, and different options available to you. I'm sorry, my pop-ups keep opening even though I don't have Outlook open. Um, so you can click on Contact Us to reach out to our staff. You can ask questions. We don't offer step-by-step -step tech support 
for our product donation programs because you know, I work for TechSoup. I don't work for Adobe. I don't work for Microsoft. I'm not an expert on QuickBooks. So we can't answer a lot of in-depth questions, but we may be able to point you to the resources where you can get those answers. What else do we have? We have another question about the term admin fee and what exactly that entails. Does one admin fee cross products, or is it specifically for that one product? Great question. So our admin fees, and I'll just go to a product page. Actually, I'll just click back to the home page and, and pick a product. Um, our admin fees are a percentage of um, retail. So depending on the donor partner and on the negotiation and agreement that we come to, we some of our donor partners may decide that they are going to discount their product. For example, Adobe makes their products more available now, and they discount 60% on Adobe Creative Cloud for the first year. And so that's 60% off of their regular retail. And then for subsequent years, they change the discount to 40%. So they are a discounter with us. They don't fully donate most of their products. They do have a couple of donations. Um, for the donors who fully donate, like Microsoft. Uh, let me just find one. Oh, and here's, here's a nice comparison article like I mentioned uh, that you may find Adobe Acrobat 11 or Adobe Acrobat Pro DC. So if you're trying to decide, we may have content that helps you make that decision. Anyway, let me go ahead and just select a product. I'll go back to Microsoft since that's what people had said they were interested in at the beginning. And I'll go back to that Microsoft Office page. Now the admin fee is based on what regular retail would be. So if you went to Best Buy for Office Professional Plus, they may sell it for $400. I think it might be $450. I don't know. Their regular MSRP is something like that. And so our admin fees range generally from 4% to 10% of the retail cost. And again, this is negotiated by TechSoup with those donor partners. Um, for the ones that donate. So Microsoft donates completely. They aren't getting any, uh, any cash through this transaction. The $40 for this license is that agreed upon um, percentage. And they actually want TechSoup to receive that. TechSoup also receives, you know, wants to receive it. But that fee is so that TechSoup can continue expanding our programs and, and help deliver these donations to people all over around the world. So that $40 admin fee is per license. And it is um, so if you have five computers that need Office Professional Plus, you'd be doing the admin fee times five to get that new donation. So keep that in mind. And it is different depending on the, the donor. So some admin fees, you know, like the Dell Access is a ten dollar fee, so it's a pretty nominal fee. Um, other programs, other admin fees, you know, for the, the laptops for example and the refurbished program, those are not fully donated. Those a portion of that is going to that refurbishing partner, and then a portion of that is staying with TechSoup to help us administer all of our programs and, and create curriculum and, and access more donations for you. So I hope that answers the question about admin fees. Any other questions coming in? Yes, I think we have one more, and this really has to do with predicting the future. Let's say someone does order a product this year. Is it typical to be able to re-up for that same product with the same specifics each year? How does that work? Sure. Some of our programs have a new product that's released every year. Like for example, I'll go to Intuit, the, the donor that makes QuickBooks. And so QuickBooks is you know, a really popular accounting tool that many nonprofits use to manage their books and, and um, you know, their reconciliations of their accounts and whatnot. And so they have a $50 admin fee for their one-year license, and that's for QuickBooks Online if you are using the online version. If you want to renew that, you can do it for 50 bucks. So it's the same to renew it in subsequent years. If you have the installed desktop version, it's $50 for the one license, or you can access a three user license for $125. And that allows three different people to have access to that. So maybe you've got an in-house operations person that in, in, you know, inputs the bills, and you have a bookkeeper who does your 990, and maybe your board chair inputs other things from a distance. 
well, you can get the three-year license of that. And Intuit is one of those companies that allows you to access one donation per fiscal year. So as of June 30th, you can access another donation. So you could get one this year until June 30th, and then as of July 1st, you can request another donation if you need more. And these fees typically stay the same. They may go up or down a little bit, but most of our donations and discount partners allow you to request again. Um, Adobe is one that they change the rate for subsequent years. Um, but they still make it a substantial discount at 40% discount uh, for subsequent years. But most of our donor partners you can renew, you can request again. It's not like a bait and switch where you get it once and then after that you are expected to pay full retail. I don't know that we have any partners that uh, have that sort of arrangement. Um, but again, you know, with QuickBooks for example, if you have the installed desktop version, you may not want to update it every year. QuickBooks will support that product, or Intuit will support their product for three years. You might want to wait a couple of years and then wait until you are upgrading to the 2019 version. Um, and that's totally up to you and your needs and your hardware and whether it can handle the upgrades and, or whether you have maybe software that you are using that is five years old and you need to stay with an older version to be compatible. So those are options that are available and, and really up to you to make the decision based on your, your biggest needs. So do we have other questions coming in right now? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and jump back to my slides. And let me just see where, what else I want to show in my slides really quickly. So we were just talking about QuickBooks or Intuit. And I didn't mention Symantec which is uh, one of our biggest providers of security and antivirus programs. There are a number of security providers through TechSoup's donation programs. So don't feel like you, know, you may know that we have Symantec, but don't feel like that's the only option available to you. Most of our donation programs you may have two or three different providers that offer similar things, but maybe one is better for you than another. So we also offer Bitdefender and Komodo. Those are different um, antivirus and Internet security providers that are donator, donors in our programs. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I didn't mention TechSoup Boost, which is for those of you who are looking to kind of get the greatest hits of a lot of different programs, TechSoup Boost offers um, a collection of different donations in one package, in a bundle that you get once a year. And so you can look at TechSoup Boost to get, um, you know, you can get access to lots of trainings. You can get a lot of different software donated. You can get, um, gosh, there's so many things in there. There's some hardware things that are available as part of it. Like I think it comes with a tablet. Um, and I think it's $99 for most well, some Boost subscriptions, and I think if you are a much bigger organization, I think it's like $129 for the Boost subscription. But it gets you access to all kinds of things. Uh, and it also includes a $25 kind of credit to use toward any request you want to make across the site. So that's one other uh, option. And I did go over discounted hardware. I forgot to mention actually when we talked about discounted hardware that Projectors, for those of you that have AV needs, that's one that JourneyEd really has a lot of projectors. So if you're needing that kind of equipment, definitely check out the JourneyEd program. And I mentioned the RCI rebate and the mobile hotspots. So I'm just looking to see if there's anything else in the slides that I think is worth calling out. And I see we did get a couple of questions asking about grants and grant management programs. Um, for those of you looking for donor databases and things like that, we have a number of options like DonorPerfect and eTapestry. Um, I would look under that section or category on our site. For those of you looking for how to get grants to begin with, um, I would check out GrantStation, which I don't have a slide in here on GrantStation, but we do have coming up in uh, the beginning of May a promotion with GrantStation where they will offer their access to their grants database membership, which is normally, uh, I think the retail price is $699. And normally through TechSoup their discount is $299. Well for two days in May, mid-May, you can access that for $99. Um, 
So keep an eye out for that. We'll do some webinars on that before it happens as well. And, and we do that two or three times a year with them so that you can access that subscription to that membership. Um, for those of you who may be familiar with Foundation Center, it's very similar where it's a grant searching database where you can go in and, and search for different grant providers um, and, and grantors, funders, uh, federal, local, state, and private foundations. Um, so keep that in mind that that's coming up. And let's see what else. Uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, I mentioned that 60% off for the first year and 40% off after that. Um, and then if you're really needing access to just real hands-on kind of tech support where you can talk to somebody by phone and get their advice on your technology situation, we do have a new product that we've launched called IT Assist. And this is in partnership. This is through TechSoup, but it's in partnership with uh, one of our nonprofit tech providers called um, Tech Impact. And they can help with live help desk support where you call and have a problem, and they can help answer the problem, help troubleshoot. They can remotely take over your desktop. Um, and if you need somebody to come in and actually plug stuff in, no matter where you are in the U.S., they can have a physical person come into your office uh, that they've contracted with to come and set you up or fix your stuff. Um, so this is an option. I would say that this is probably not uh, best suited to really tiny organizations, even though we know that really tiny organizations could really benefit from it, um, just because it's, it's kind of a maintenance contract where you're you're working with them longer term to ensure that you're meeting your technology needs and you're talking about your strategy for technology and, and how you're going to leverage that longer term. So I would look into this if you're looking for tech support and you want to work with a nonprofit to do it. This is a great option. Um, for those of you from really teeny tiny organizations, really I think you, uh, if you are not already using the cloud for a lot of your infrastructure, if you still have a physical server in your closet, my advice would be to try and get off it. <laughs> try and get yourself into Office 365 or Google Apps or something that's maintained outside of your own office because it's just too much cost and worry and expense to have to uh, do that in-house if you don't have IT staff to help you manage it. So this is just a quick look at all of the different types of partners we have. So I mean, if you need a credit card processing service to you know, help you manage processing payments, uh, whether on your site or when you're at an event and you need to take payments, Dharma Merchant Services is there. You may not know these things by name, but as you're searching, you'll see lots of different options. If you're looking for something to help you make t-shirts for your fundraiser, Teespring is a great option. So you know, I'm mentioning these just because there's so much here, and we really don't have time to go into everything. Fundraising uh, systems like Bloomerang. Uh, I mean there's so much. There's Shopify that can help you set up your own storefront. Um, you know, there's just so much available that I really re recommend going in and just checking out those different, different sections. If you are signing up as an individual that you get yourself registered. It's just a few steps, and these are captured in the slides um, to take you through those steps. You register your organization. Like I said, you need that EIN number um, and your org budget. And once you're in the system, you can start requesting even if you haven't been totally approved yet. Uh, you, can, you can get yourself going and get those requests, get your technology improving, uh, and that's really what it's all about. We really want to make sure that you're equipped to get your technology where you want it to be so that it's helping you instead of hindering you. Uh, as part of that, we've also launched our courses where you can access a lot of our technology courses uh, for free. Some have costs, but you can access those at our TechSoup.Course.TC catalog. And that's where you can find uh, trainings available 24-7 when you want to access them. You can get to those uh, to watch videos and take quizzes, read articles or white papers, um, and really learn how to use some of the technologies that would benefit you. And so right now we have a training on how to train your staff on technology. We have tech planning. We have trainings on how to use the different Adobe products for beginners. 
There's a lot in there, and we're adding more to it all the time. Uh, we also recommend if you aren't already subscribed to our newsletters that you, you subscribe to something so that you're getting that you're getting the information when there's a new product that's been launched because maybe it's the one that you've been hoping that we would add to our catalog. Or maybe it's that article that you've been really needing to help you compare those different products. Maybe it's just the question about like, should we be on Facebook? Maybe it's a conversation that you'll see linked in there to help you decide if that's a good use of your time. Um, you can also get real-world networking face-to-face -face with real human beings at our NetSquared meetups all around the world. I think there's uh, 70 different meetups happening in 42 countries around the world. And so check out the NetSquared site and look for – you can put in your zip code and see if there are any meetups happening around you. These happen typically once a month on a variety of different topics where you can meet real live human people in the flesh and have a beer and talk about what technology can help you know what technologies can help you and if there's a problem that you're having they can maybe point you to people that can help you resolve it so check that out as well um, there's links in here we would love for you to let us know one thing in the chat that has helped you today that you're going to take back and implement maybe you're going to go and check out the site and register maybe you plan to um, check out our courses that are available and see what's in there that you can learn. Maybe you are going to go sign up in the forums. Or maybe there's a product that you didn't know we had that you're like, yes, I'm going to go get that today. Let us know what that one thing is that has helped you. And take a moment when we're done to complete the post-event survey so we can continue to improve programs like this one. And with that in mind, I'd like you to uh, invite you to upcoming webinars. We'll be talking about disaster planning and recovery next week. And then we'll be going over in depth our different hardware programs. So for those of you really interested in the computers and technology, we'll be talking about that on the 13th. On the 18th we'll be talking about security best practices and things that you can do, steps you can take to make your organization more secure. And we will be talking about Microsoft compliance in the cloud. So if there are rules you need to be following to use cloud products, We'll be talking about that. And then we'll be uh, looking at digital storytelling specifically for libraries. And thank you so much to Susan for helping on the back end. Thank you to ReadyTalk, our webinar sponsor. And thank you mostly to you, our participants, for taking the time out today. I hope that you've learned uh, what you came here to learn and that you are excited to go check out the resources and really maximize the donations available to your organization. We want you to have what you need to work effectively and accomplish your missions so we can accomplish ours. Thanks a lot everyone and have a great day. Bye-bye.